what is going on everybody your friendly neighborhood saying is back and this time we have a very different video i'm actually really excited i've been wanting to do this specific type of video for a long long time so i'm pretty sure just like the rest of you guys watching we are all obviously excited for endgame to come out within the next few weeks but ever since hearing about the quantum row being the big thing that could help our heroes win and also hearing about possible spoiler alert possible rumored time travel shenanigans that may happen in the film i can't help but think what about the different alternate realities out there how would these stories play out with certain events changing or be different well that is the topic of today's video with the question being what if just what if in this reality thor did actually aim for the head and did in fact kill thanos at wakanda what if dr strange's vision was different what would happen to the infinity gauntlet with thanos then well Let's dive on in and find out. At last, with all six Infinity Stones in his possession, and placing the sixth and final stone, the Mind Stone, into the gauntlet, Thanos becomes the master of the universe, with nigh infinite power at his disposal for whatever his need may be. With the mighty roar to Earth's sky, Thanos has victory within his grasp or so he thinks he does. Mere seconds after his victory of war, a ferocious lightning bolt cracks from the sky and hits Thanos, knocking him off his feet and far back. It is revealed to be none other than Thor, the god of thunder himself, with a new powerful weapon that happens to be made from the same material as the Infinity Gauntlet. And he has come to collect his revenge for the deaths of his people, his friend Heimdall, and his brother Loki all of which by the tyrant's hands. But the mad titan shrugs this off and recovers quickly and responds with a devastating energy beam containing the combined strength of all six infinity stones at the Odin sun. But with quick haste, Thor responds by summoning every bit of his might and rage and channels it into an incredible axe throw at the mad titan himself. One final precise attack without mercy. And within seconds, Stormbreaker immediately makes contact with Thanos' energy beam, and much to his shock and panic begins to overpower the beam completely altogether, during which Thanos can't help but think, how? How could this be possible? Something stronger than the Infinity Gauntlet? No. No, this is not how things should- And a second later, a deafening silence, followed soon after, by a loud thud. As Thor lands back on the ground and as the dust settles, his eyes meet upon a sight. Stormbreaker is not lying on the ground but instead has embedded itself deep within the skull of the Mad Titan who now lies lifeless on the dirt, blood dripping down the edge of the axe at a medium pace. The Mad Titan, the being who had all the power in the universe in his hands literally seconds ago, was dead. With a swift raising of his arm, Thor calls out to Stormbreaker and it tears away from the dead titan's head and falls back within his grasp. But before Odin's son decides to do anything else, his gaze meets upon the Infinity Gauntlet, which has by now fallen off of Thanos' hand. An otherworldly glow and a smooth hum both emanate from it, and Thor shares a quick thought with himself. Everything that has ever happened, from the invasion in New York to the rise of Ultron, and even this battle that has just taken place, has all been in some way, shape, or form related to the Infinity Gauntlet and how much power it holds. That same power destroyed most of Thor's people and was mere moments away from bringing about Earth's own Ragnarok. Simply put, the Gauntlet and its stones cannot be allowed to exist any longer. And without a moment's notice, Thor raises Stormbreaker, only to drive it down hard and fiercely upon the Infinity Gauntlet, completely shattering it into dozens of pieces. And in the next second, it is all over, and the Infinity Gauntlet is completely destroyed, with all six stones completely shattered to pieces. Thor closes his eyes, leans his head back, and breathes out a sigh of relief. He has won. Asgard has been avenged. In this alternative reality, Doctor Strange's vision of winning is vastly different. While looking into the future for every single possible outcome instead of the events of Endgame transpiring, Strange sees the God of Thunder, more powerful than ever before, standing tall over a lifeless Thanos, 
battle axe in hand, with the obliterated remains of the Infinity Gauntlet nearby as well. Knowing this, Strange would then go on to fight Thanos as we have already seen, but only this time to buy Thor as much time as he possibly can, and would still even go as far as to give Thanos a stone, except this time he knows that Thor will go on to destroy the gauntlet completely and the gems, ensuring that that much unfathomable power never finds its way into anyone's hands ever again. Now with this rapidly different spin on the finale of the Battle of Wakanda, we also got a bunch of different possible outcomes as well. The Avengers, the Guardians, and Wakanda are all obviously celebrated by humanity as war heroes. Their courage and will is remembered throughout time and history by Earth. Soon after the battle of Wakanda, Thor would probably fly off into the cosmos to find Valkyrie and would probably go on to rebuild new Asgard and bring it to an even greater glory than before. Tony's dream ends up coming true and Pepper would finally give birth to a child by the name of Morgan and in the end, the two finally become a peaceful loving family with their newborn with Tony completely leaving Iron Man in the past once and for all, fully entrusting Earth's protection into the hands of the new Avengers. The Guardians eventually, they go back to doing what they do best, but in a world without Gamora, Peter falls into a state of depression and eventually decides to retire from the game, with Nebula probably joining the Guardians afterwards, as to be honest, well, it's, it's all she has left at this point. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Wait, but Ant-Man and his group would still be alive at this point. They could probably figure out the Quantum Realm and go back in time to save Gamora somehow. Well, that's a possibility. But once again, a possibility. And in a reality where the snap doesn't go off, we have to assume just how radically different things could be or change. The new Avengers, consisting of Black Panther, Spider-Man, Winter Soldier, Falcon, who at this point has actually went on to assume the mantle of Captain America and Doctor Strange are born and vow to protect both Earth and its future. Steve and Natasha both do eventually retire, but they still commune back and forth with the new Avengers here and there every once in a while. After the Battle of Wakanda, much to Scarlet Witch's surprise, a revived vision appears due to the snap never having went off and Shuri never dying which would lead to her research being able to be completed. The two would eventually marry and would go on to sire two children named Thomas and William. And last but not least, the Hulk? Well, the Hulk is a bit of a wild card in this situation considering the fact that the last time we saw him, Hulk absolutely refused to partake in any fighting whatsoever. But based on things and scenarios I've thought over, I've been able to come to these two following conclusions. One, Hulk would either end up repressed in the body of Banner and would refuse to ever come out again out of fear of being decimated the exact same way that Thanos did to him back on that ship. But that's my least favorite likely theory, honestly, and I strongly doubt that would happen. And my second theory, which would be after a while, Hulk does end up returning to Banner, but only this time after conversing with Bruce's mind and seeing how Bruce kept him safe during the Battle of Wakanda, the two eventually go on to accept that, hey, they're, they're nothing without one another. They're two sides to the same coin. And with that acceptance, Professor Hulk is born. And that is going to be it for the video, guys. Woo! We did it! First theory of video. Theory of video? What is that? What? Johnny, what are you doing with your shit? Be sure to Detroit smash that like and subscribe button. And I want to hear your personal thoughts in the comment section down below on what you personally think about my theory. And until next time, peace and chicken grease.